MRN Crew Call is brought to you by Hercules Tires. Welcome to MRN Crew Call here on the Motor Racing Network. My name is Kyle Rickey, and uh, we got a big show for you here today as finally we are racing again in NASCAR's National Series. The NASCAR Cup Series opened up about a week and a half ago at the Darlington Raceway in South Carolina. The first race in over two and a half months, about 71 days to be exact, since their last event at the Phoenix Raceway in Arizona. And we will be joined by one of the pit reporters that uh, was able to cover all the action on pit road in Darlington, Hannah Newhouse. She is also my co-host on NASCAR Coast to Coast every week here on MRN, a show that talks about short track racing. And there are short tracks that are also beginning to open up here in the United States. We'll talk to Hannah about that and her experience at Darlington Raceway. Coming up next, we'll dial up Hannah here on Crew Call. Sir, are you aware you were going 40 miles an hour? This is a residential area. Sure, but I'm on my lawnmower. Wait, am I getting a ticket? No, I've just never seen anyone top nine miles an hour on one of those bad boys. And mow their entire lawn in 30 seconds? What got into you? Well, it did fuel up at Sunoco this morning. At Sunoco, we know how to fuel peak performance. We've been doing it for American Racing for over 50 years. Fuel your best. Welcome back to Crew Call here on the Motor Racing Network. Kyle Rickey with you, and we got back to racing finally after 71 days this past week at the Darlington Raceway in South Carolina for the NASCAR Cup Series. As heard here on the Motor Racing Network in one of the six voices on our broadcast back, was Hannah Newhouse, who is also my co-host on NASCAR Coast to Coast twice this week, Hannah, here on MRN. Uh, and you've been busy yourself. Uh, first off, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Yeah, I was so excited to get back to racing this past weekend at Darlington. Uh, you know, we cover short track racing across the country each and every week, but to get back to racing just fulfilled so much for so many. And we weren't the only ones at Darlington. Before we even get into the short track racing, it was so great to see everyone. It may have been under masks and from six feet apart. But it was so great to see everyone on pit road to get back to racing. Different dynamic, but hats off to NASCAR. I mean, we went through, you know, screenings, uh, security. Everyone was in full protocol there at Darlington. Uh, Mother Nature, a little rude to us this week uh, thus far, uh, but hey, we'll get through it. But short track racing is slowly coming back to life. And we talked about it this past week on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Well, we're going to touch on the short track stuff in a moment, but I want to know, and I talked to a lot of our crew after the Darlington race because they had long drives home and they all thought, let's call Kyle because he's up. And I didn't really hear anybody talk anything about the screening process or, or any of the, I mean, was it that smooth that, I mean, it wasn't really much of a factor. A lot of the processes that were put into place, I mean, we saw them, we know that they were there, but I really didn't hear much conversation about them. Yeah, no, it was uh, very smooth. I mean, NASCAR had set apart the people that were approved, you know, prior to the event, uh, the week before we went into the Motor Racing Network, was screened and given our appropriate, you know, equipment, our masks and stuff to be used on race weekends. And then throughout the week leading up to, we were in touch with a lot of NASCAR personnel and MRN personnel, um, you know, in regards to just staying distance from people, making sure that we're in the best case scenario when we do show up to that event. And then uh, in the 24 hour period beforehand, NASCAR again sent out a questionnaire screening us upon arrival. They also screened us taking our temperatures, uh, verifying all of our questions. And then once you were on premise, your mask was required to be on at all points. And I will say that was a challenge within itself. You know, uh, a lot of our turn announcers, our booth guys up in the booth were socially distanced, had the plates or the screening between them. So they weren't required to wear their masks uh, because they were distanced from anyone else. Our turn guys are out by themselves. Yeah. They had no one near them. So myself and Kim Kuhn down on pit road uh, had the pleasure of doing our job with full masks on. And it was probably 89, 90 degrees when we took the green flag at Darlington. It was humid. And I was waiting for my lovely mask tan line to come in because it was <laughs> so hot. And uh, definitely was just, it just was an interesting challenge to try and take on because we had never done this before. So doing our interviews with boom mics, having to go back and forth between drivers. At one point, I did an interview at the Care Center with Jimmy Johnson, and you don't realize as reporters how much you rely on reading people's lips. Yep. And so when the cars are blaring on the racetrack and I'm trying to cue, 
Jimmy from six feet apart on a question that he can't hear me ask. And I'm pointing to clipboards and pointing back at him. And we're trying to hand signal each other. It just was a very interesting time, but it's something that I look forward to talking to people about, you know, in years to come because we did a first in history. One thing I, I did hear from, from you, especially as a pit reporter, uh, was that you really didn't have to throw the elbows on pit road. Uh, it was fairly quiet, and we usually don't have that. Uh, usually there's thousands of people on pit road, but there were no PR people. The, uh, the teams were limited in the number of crew members that they can bring. So how difficult was it to get information to, to report what's happening in your section? Yeah, it was very difficult. And we've actually, you know, uh, been thinned down to one pit reporter now moving forward. So originally it was Kim and I on uh, Sunday at Darlington. And you don't realize it, but not being able to walk up and tap on someone and go, hey, what's going on, uh, makes a whole challenge within itself because we're now just required or we are, we have for resources is our scanners. So we're listening to these team channels, but Kim and I each had 20 something cars in both of our pit sections that we're scanning. And when you're scanning a cup race, you each have seven, eight drivers at least that are there in contention. And if you miss it set on the radio, you miss it. You couldn't go up and tap on a PR person and get notes. And um, a couple PR people were actually scanning their team channels from home and sending mm -hmm. us updates, which did help some, um, but it was very difficult to do that and now have the entire field that you're doing with one pit reporter. Um, so hats off to Regan Smith. First off, he was there solo that Sunday. Um, I passed him probably 52 times just on my side of pit road with his runner. So we all got our steps in uh, multiple times where you, you know you kind of start hyperventilating in your mask, but it's okay. It's for the best that we're all wearing them. But it definitely posed some difficulties in making sure that we had the right information, not being able to climb up on the pit box and ask Chad, hey, did William, you know, did he have a loose wheel? Is that what it was? Was it a brake rotor that set the field on fire behind turn one and two? We couldn't know. Um, so it's been a learning experience and it'll continue to be a learning experience these next couple races. Yeah, this process will evolve. Uh, no doubt it already is as we get into the next couple of events. Hopefully Mother Nature at some point cooperates with all the happenings at Darlington before we move into Charlotte this upcoming week for another uh, busy week of racing. We talked about the big tracks, the short tracks you mentioned earlier. They are finally opening up. We talk about it every week on NASCAR Coast to Coast here on MRN and, and MRN.com. Um, I think every track, and, and we talk about it on the show, every state is different. They're all opening at different phases, and each phase, the, 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 the rules and the regulations are different. So we've dealt with a lot of short tracks that have a lot of different feels. Uh, Hickory looks a lot different than, say, a Greenville Pickens or a Myrtle Beach, and they're only one state apart. Tucson's opening up this weekend in Arizona. But I guess the good thing about it all is we're, being, we're able to talk about short track racing again. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of these guys that we talked about at the beginning of the season are starting to return to racing. We had Josh Berry on this past week, uh, swept both twin late model stock races at Hickory. And even to hear his side of things on how short track racing is evolving and taking on this challenge. You know, everyone's required to wear masks there. They're not incorporating fans. But then we talked about Greenville Pickens, who they have the capabilities of doing a drive-in theater style spectatorship. So they allowed fans to park their trucks up against the fence, social distance, just charged a flat fee per car. And they were able to have fans because they could withhold the social distancing guidelines. So again, like you said, as tracks continue to open up, I know Slinger Speedway uh, is opening up this weekend. And I think they may have some social distancing in their plans of allowing some spectatorship, a lot of short tracks embracing the pay-per-view plan. We yep. saw it with World of Outlaws and the dirt racing. We've seen USAC. They're going to wholly embrace that with their uh, flow racing stuff. So it's been nice to be able to, I will say, sit at home and watch these short track racing events knowing that I can't get to them. But yes, there was a lot of fill time that you and I did, Kyle, on Coast to Coast, trying to come up with everything we could when we had 71 days without short track racing. And it's global, you know, and it's affecting all of the NASCAR series, not just the short tracks here in, in the States, but in Canada. And we, you know, we talked to some of the folks from the NASCAR Wheel and Euro series, and they're in a whole different ball game over in Europe because this is a series that travels from country to country. And, you know, much like the States here, all those countries are in different phases of lockdown or not. 
And that was so cool to talk to them, you know, hearing how they incorporated, we've seen iRacing incorporated in so many facets, not only with in NASCAR with the pro invitational series, but the short track levels, and then to see the Euro series embrace it and actually incorporate it into their 2020 season. They're making these drivers run for a championship as far as owner points. So this will go towards the regular season. And it was cool to see that because like you said, they're so unsure of when they're going to be able to get back to racing. You know, we talked about the NASCAR wheel and modified tour being up in the new England area heavily. There are a lot of states and tracks that are going to open up way later than anticipated. So that may force them down South. We may have what we could call the Southern modified tour revived because that's all that's open right now. It's going to be interesting to see how these next couple of months play out, no doubt. And if you missed any of those interviews over the last couple of weeks, check us out on NASCAR Coast to Coast on the Motor Racing Network, MRN.com. We're there with a new show every Wednesday. Hannah, I know you got a busy week ahead. Um, enjoy uh, your time at the racetrack. Hopefully you stay dry, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thanks, Kyle. We'll have more, more on this edition of Crew Call after the break. Wherever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there no matter where the road takes you. You can count on Hercules Tires to have your back when times are tough, all while adding money to your pocket. The purchase of four qualifying Hercules Tires through May 31st, 2020 could get you up to a $70 Visa prepaid card. Visit HerculesTire.com slash spring rebate to learn more. That's HerculesTire.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Welcome back to Crew Call here on the Motor Racing Network. And again, a big thank you to Hannah Newhouse for joining us. You can see us every week on NASCAR Coast to Coast on the Motor Racing Network. Now with the racing season back, MRN would like to see how you're enjoying the races. Tweet us your pictures or video of personal tailgate parties at MRN Radio using the hashtag NASCAR Tailgate. You may see your entry on an upcoming MRN program. Until next week, I'm Kyle Rickey. MRN Crew Call was brought to you by Hercules Tires.